so you want to make a model for MGS5 in Blender. Well, it's actually pretty easy. So you open up Unity. Any version works, I believe. You go to... Assets. Import package. Custom package. And you find your F model Unity package. It will normally take a few minutes and might give you an error depending on the version you're using, so you might have to click OK and let it update the Unity package or whatever. I haven't experienced any issues in doing that, so you might not as well. Okay, so you've got that. Then you should be able to grab an FMDL. So we're replacing the sneaking suit. So it'd be MGS5, uh, Assets, TPP. Pack, player, parts, and then it will be with inside of PL parts sneaking suit. Uh, I'm not going to go over exactly how to use the FPK tool because it's just a drag and drop, and I'm sure you can find that in the Discord. So you just export your FPK, FPK, with the tool. Uh, and then it'll get you into this folder with the FMDL. Okay, so then we drag and drop this into our Unity. Wait for it to import. There it is. You can also go on the wiki to find out how to make textures appear, but it's pretty simple. You go to FMDL Studio, and then you set texture path, and you find the assets path of your export of the Phantom Pain. So we drag and drop snake in here, set these all three of these to zero, then we convert to day, we're going to just toss this in my downloads, we're going to open up blender, import collada with normals, you will have to get a plugin for that which I believe is also linked in the discords and such. And now we have Snake. So this is the model we're going to be replacing, so we will need its skeleton. Our custom mesh will not be using his mesh, but we will be using his skeleton, which is a very important thing to note. If you don't plan on changing the FRDV or anything, you will need the skeleton that comes with the model. So since we're replacing the sneaking suit, and we're not going to change the FRDV, which is like a bone defining thing, then don't change the skeleton. Just keep it the same skeleton. I mean, you can edit it like, oh, I want to move his arm a little bit or something, I believe. But, you know, don't use a different skeleton. Just use the one he came with. So say we want to replace Snake with uh, maybe an XOF soldier. So we'll go to TPP pack. Uh, mission 2 common and then mission common XOF soldier so we're going to open this guy up toss his FMDL in bring it into unity set it to 0 0 0 convert to Kalata save Zoom in and out to check when it's done exporting. Import day, well, import Collada with normals. And then there. And now we have our mesh. So we can delete the armature. Well, don't delete it yet. You want to grab all the pieces, click and drag, hold shift, hold alt, release on the initial skeleton, delete the new skeleton and then you can go through there might be a faster way to do this but I just go through all these uh, you know all 30 of them and set them to the new armature there's an alternative way that you can select them all so let me undo the ones I did You can shift click to the bottom, control click this, control J, I believe, oh no, control P, then armature deform, 
and this will automatically give it that. But it comes with a second armature. We're going to test if that does anything. I don't think it does. We'll find out. Uh, so this guy has two goggles. We don't want that, so we're just going to delete the secondary goggle mesh. He's got a whole bunch of tape pieces back here. I don't know what they do. Uh, we just want tape A. So there we go. Now we click on the skeleton, we press N, and you can see that the rotation is set to 90. We're going to set that to 0. You'll see he'll rotate like this. This is good. This is what we want. You want to make sure that that's set, and then click on these meshes. Occasionally, depending on the mesh you've made, you'll notice that the scale might be different. So what you want to do is select everything, go to Object, Apply, and Apply All Transforms. Now we're ready to export. So we can go to export, day, these options should be fine. Then we're going to go to downloads, wherever you want to export it really. And then we're going to move this model aside, move this model aside. And we are going to bring in our new model. So downloads, bring in the new mesh, set 0, 0, 0, and you notice he's still a little rotated so we're going to fix that by setting the rotation to 0. And now we have the model in Unity. Now what we can do is we can go through, we can grab the textures from this model, so we'll select that and you'll see the material will pop up at the bottom right here. So what you can do is you can just drag and drop it onto the mesh. Now say you want a custom texture. You'll go to this three dots here and you'll create variant for renderer. And now it has a new material and we can set the images to whichever we want. So I really want him to use this texture. Well now he does. As for custom materials, let me go to a mod I've made before. Whatever, however you set it up here, starting from assets, so we'll go to my Gray Fox mod, assets, TPP, I did not, ah, that's right, I forgot, um, so here's something I tend to do, I will use the PFTXS which is like a packed version of the textures, so you don't need them loose. I can make a separate video on how to do that, but it's using pretty much, uh, I believe it's using the Fox tool. So we'll go to File, Apps, MGS, and then Fox tool. So, I can go over how this works real quick. So basically, when you unpack a parts file, whatever you want to call it, is it not Fox Tool? I could have sworn it was. Does the FPK tool do it? Maybe I can't unpack my own? I'm not quite sure. But normally, when you unpack one of those, so we'll go to here. He should have a PFX, whatever it's called, I lose track. Here we go. I believe it's Fox Tool that should do it. It's been a minute. Maybe if 
Maybe this? Hmm. Maybe I'm missing one of the net requirements. Hold on, let me check real quick. Fox tool is not what decompiles them, so I'm a little restarted. Ah, I might be this. Ah, it's the GZS tool is what you use to decompile these. Sorry for the confusion. So you can decompile an existing one. And when you decompile it, it should give you this XML file. I just use Notepad++ to edit them. And you'll see this is how they come. So there are a few important things. So note this. This will be the name of the folder it repacks. So we'll scroll back up here. And you'll see underscore PFTXS. Imagine that the underscore is a dot, but it will repack this folder because that is the name it's pointing towards. So how these work is they just define texture paths. So we're going to go in here and you'll see that's all the textures. So what I tend to do is I will pack all of them in there instead of having any loose files at all. So I'll go to MGS5, Gray Fox, Mod, Assets, and we'll delete this re-export it and you'll see I have well I guess it didn't label them but typically it will you, you, you see the point really you just put in the textures into a folder named the same thing as this or name this to something custom and name the folder after it then you go to assets, TPP, wherever your file is stored, and then path to it right here. Uh, if you have another line, like you want to pack all four FTEXs, you just do bam, bam with control D, set this to two, set this to three, and there you go. As for making custom textures. So there's a few general, there's a few general rules for making textures. So let's go to my textures. So I use paint.net personally to save my textures, but most of the editing is done in Photoshop. So here's a texture. What you want to do is once your texture is done, you'll go to save as, and you'll want to save it as a direct draw surface. Now you can copy my settings here but you need to make sure that you generate mint maps and you need to set it to either DXT1 or DXT5. DXT5 is for textures with alpha channels, so transparency basically, and DXT1 is for uh, textures with just no alpha channel. Sorry, I got something stuck in my throat there. So this texture obviously doesn't have an alpha channel. So I would save it as DXT1. Well, once you're done viewing the textures, 
for your model. So we'll go here, drag and drop. So once you're done doing the textures, there's a few things you need to do. So you need to go to FMDL Studio, generate bounding boxes. That's step one. Step two, this is very important. Select the whole mesh and add a component Fox model. This is very important. So your first mesh, your first element name will be mesh root like this capitalization to a T. Now, if you're replacing snake, generally you'll want to take a look at his. So he has mesh head, mesh arm, mesh leg, mesh item. Uh, XOF is for that little badge on the back. But the most important ones are like handgun, holster, grip, walkman, root, head. And body is also an important one, but I don't see it here. I guess arm and leg count for that. So this is his head mesh. So let me explain you why this is important. So this is important because that tells the game what to hide and what not to hide while in first person. So Snake's beard is set to mesh head because when you open your eye droid, you want the head to disappear. So anything labeled mesh head will disappear. Walkman is for his radio or well, his tape player, whatever it is. Uh, and I believe grip is for the this yeah mesh grip so that will disappear when he pulls out his knife and then arm body typically I just name all the body parts body but you'll want to make sure that arms are set to mesh arm because otherwise they will also disappear in first person so you need to make sure all the arm parts are enabled mesh underscore arm capitalization is right there and then once you're done with that you're good to fix the tangents and export fmdl once your fmdl is exported you can toss it into your decompiled fpk so you go into your FPK, set it over whatever model you're replacing, and then you're good to use make byte. So storage F apps MGS snake byte and you need make byte. And you can see how you set it up. Make sure it's right in the folder, right before assets. So mods, MGS5, Gray Fox, mod, assets is right there. So I select this folder. And then you just click build mod. And you're good to install it with Snakebite and try it out in game. If I missed anything, let me know. But that should be about all you need to know from Blender to MGS5 The Phantom Pain.